Hi, hi, greetings and more grace to everyone. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is your girl, Janae Evans, back again with yet another topic of discussion. But before we discuss anything, let's handle a little bit of business, shall we? If you would head on over that to that like button and go ahead on and click it ever so gently. Thank you so much. Now, change on over that to that subscribe button. That's it. Go ahead on and smash it. Yes, right there. And while you're right round up and through that, go ahead on and click uh, that notification bell so you can be alerted as to when we upload new videos. It is so good to see each and every one of you again back here with me for part four four of our series entitled Spiritual, where in this series, we are chopping it up, laying it out, you know, about, you know, things, all things spiritual, you know, what it means to live in the spirit, walk in the spirit, be spiritual. Listen, even understanding that your God is a spirit. Listen, we're going to chop it up and we're going to let you know the basics to what it means to being spiritual. So where we left off yesterday, we were talking about how, you know, about uh, our foundational scriptures, uh, John chapter four, verses 23 through 24. We were laying that foundation and ironing it out, you know, and giving you all of the meat that we can pick from that scripture. And we were talking about the true worshiper, you know, in verse 23, understanding the nature, the nature of the true worshiper. And then verse 24, we were talking about understanding what it means uh, by your God being a spirit. Huh? So listen, we're going to finish up with the true worshiper. And so that's in uh, John 4 and 23. So listen, um, what we left out with yesterday, y'all, we were talking about how worship should never be about you. Huh? Worship should, true worship should never be about you. It should never be about your experiences and, you know, I mean, your, your feelings, okay? It shouldn't be about your feelings, your emotions. We're talking about true worship now. There are some experiences you have. Let me clear this up now. Uh, there are some experiences you have when you are, you know, praising and, you know, and when you are, you know, before God, just giving him praise and giving him glory, you know, where you are, you putting yourself into it. But just to be clear about it, that's not necessarily the true worship that God is looking for. Is he displeased with what you're doing? I don't believe he is. You know, when you you know, pouring from your emotions, when you're pouring from, you know, your, your fleshly, your natural side, I don't think he, he trip about it. Come on, can I be real with you today? But I just want you to understand true worship. True worship doesn't start out here. True worship comes from within. Huh? It should never be about you. True worship, you know, a true worshiper understands that God wants to be ministered to. Huh? God wants his needs taken care of. That's true worship. When you can go before the father and you know that this is strictly for him. You ain't coming to God with nothing for yourself. God is all about you. That's true worship, okay? So listen, true worship should leave you with the satisfaction and comfort in knowing that you have pleased God and made him happy. Huh? When you get out of that worship experience, honey, you ought to know within your knower that God was pleased with what you did. He felt, he experienced, he enjoyed everything you gave to him. Huh? That's what true worship should leave you with in your natural being, huh? With that satisfaction of knowing I did this for God and I know he was pleased. Listen, true worship should not be what you feel. Listen, that's my favorite word. In your shondo, huh? True worship ain't about what you feel in your shondo. Huh? That's right, right up in that area that that man, when you feeling all up in your when y'all be your emotions and in your flesh and in your experience, huh? That's when you feeling it in your shondo, huh? That ain't true worship. It ain't got no business being about you, huh? It's about the Father. Listen, true worship, y'all. Hear me, hear me, hear me. What I say, 
True worship is a form of giving. I Okay, listen, clutch your pearls, sis. Huh? Grab your chest, sir. Because somebody, you know, everybody ain't give us. Huh? Everybody don't like to give. Some people like this. When it comes to, when you even mention the word giving, they, they, their hands clutch real quick. But true worship is a form of giving. And guess what, y'all? Giving costs you. Did you hear me what I said? Giving costs you, whether it's in time, huh? Or it's whether it's in money. Giving costs, huh? The true worship comes from a place of love. Listen, and love costs. Love ain't free. So you, you say explain it to me. I'm finna explain it to you right now. True worship. We're talking about true worship now. It comes from a place of, of, of love, huh? True worship costs you. True worship is a form of giving. How you say, what you mean, Janae? I'm finna show you. Go to your favorite scripture, that one you know by heart that they taught you in Sunday school. It's about the only one you know, but it's okay. You remember it, and you don't you forget it. John 3, 16, we can quote it together. For God so loved the world, y'all, what he did? He gave. I'm gonna stop it right there. I'm gonna let it marinate a little tank. Uh-huh. I'm going to say it again for the people in the back. For God so loved the world that he gave huh, his only begotten son. huh, That whosoever should believe on him shall not perish, huh, but have everlasting life. Baby, your God loved you so much that he rescued you from his wrath. By giving his son for you. Baby, love costs. Love costs. Love ain't free. Do you know how much love God had for you? Baby, he, he sacrificed his own son that he brought to the earth. Huh? He sacrificed that, 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 that his son. You know, to be that, to be that with the scripture called the propitiation. Huh? That's the cost. That's the payment. That's the ransom that was required for the sin nature. My God from Zion, we ain't come, we ain't come here to, to, to preach no lesson today. We came here to talk about being spiritual. Huh? Listen to me. For God so loved the world that he gave. So why do you think you shouldn't be able to give to him? Your worship ain't about you. Your worship is about him. Huh? And if it's about you, then it ain't worship. Huh? That was the foundation of, of, of establishing worship. Huh? Give. Huh? Give it to him. He deserves it. We gonna move on. But that's your basis right there of how, how worship should be looked at. Worship is so valuable. Honey, worship is an act of giving. Worship is love and love costs. Huh? Listen, if you are giving something, you do so because you love. I'm not going to give you nothing and I don't like you. Child, please. I'm not going to give you nothing. If I ain't, listen, why? I'm not casting my pearls to swine. That's what the word told me. Huh? But when you give something and you know you're a giver, you're giving that thing out of love, huh? Because you know you got that heart to give. That's how we should be feeling about the Father when we worship. Huh? I'm giving it to you, God, because you deserve it. Huh? Because I love you. Huh? That's a true worshiper right there. Love is an act of selflessness. God, regardless of what I'm going through today, I'm going to give you this time because you deserve it. Love is an act of selflessness, y'all. Huh? Getting yourself out the way. Getting your flesh out the way. Getting your emotions out know out the way. You know, and going before God, asking him, God, how can I make you happy today, sir? <laughs> My God from Zion. Listen, worship should be done out of love and not for an emotional experience. Y'all, yeah, I didn't, didn't uh, been pressing that all throughout this series. True worship 
ain't about your feelings and your emotions. It should be done from a place of your love for God because of your relationship with him, because of your revelation of him. That's true worship. Listen, when Job lost everything, hear me what I say. When Job lost everything, the Bible says that he got on his knees and he worshiped. Do you remember when we talked about sometimes things have to be taken from you in order for you to see what's, the, what's important and who is important, huh? Honey, when Job lost everything, he he got up that praise. Mm, mm, mm. No, Job ain't get up there doing all that. For he ain't had nothing to praise God for. That man just lost everything. But because of his relationship with God, because of who God meant to him, baby, the only thing he knew he had left to give was worship. God, you know what it is you doing. Ooh, my God from Zion. God, you know what it is you doing. So God, you be God. Huh? I trust what you're doing, sir. Huh? You be wonderful like you always are. Job got down, y'all, and he worshiped. My God from Zion. Listen, the Bible did not say Job praised. It ain't said that no way in there. He worshiped. Job's situation ain't have. You, you, you know what that man went through. Huh? Everything. The dog, the cat, the deer, the ghost, the sheep, the cheering. Huh? The wife. I think she stayed. But everything else was gone. Huh? He had nothing to praise God for. But what he did. Huh? Because of his love for God and his relationship, he worshiped. Huh? Listen, the seraphims don't praise God day and night. They worship him. Go to Isaiah 6 and 3. I ain't going to go there with you now. But when you get a chance, you go look in Isaiah 6 and 3. When they calling out to each other, holy, holy, holy. Listen, they hear. Holy, holy. Holy are you, Lord God. Honey, they up there worshiping God day and night. Huh? Because he deserves it. Because he's worth it. Huh? True worship is the romancing. Ooh, listen. Hear me what I say. True worship is the romancing of God's heart. Ooh, ladies, you ought to know what I'm talking about. My God from Zion. Huh? Men, hopefully you know what romance is. But when you are a true worshiper of God, it's that romancing and that caressing of his heart, baby, that, that make him say, oh, hey, hey, yeah. Come on. You ought to be real with yourself if you know you're a true worshiper. Huh? You know what it's about. Huh? Talking about the true worshiper. It's the romancing of God's heart. Listen, uttering and offering those sweet nothings to him, huh? Until it provokes him. Ooh, I feel that right now. Until it provokes him to give into your heart's desires. Ooh, I'm going to let that sound a minute. Listen, true worship is the romancing and the caressing of God's heart so much so Huh? When you uttering those sweet nothings to him, God, you're amazing. Huh? God, you're awesome. Huh? God, nobody deserves your glory. Huh? You are King of Kings. You are Lord of Lords. Come on, when you uttering those sweet nothings to him, huh? Honey, that thing provokes him so where he say, I got to, hey, he say, I got to go see what she wants. I got to go see what he need, huh? That's true worship, huh? When you know you and sat there and made your God smile, huh? You ain't with that with your grocery list of things. Okay, God, I need things one through three right now. And then uh, when I come back a little bit later, I'm going to ask you for four, five, and six. Uh-uh. Baby, true worship is when you didn't caress his ego, when you didn't stroke his emotions, when you didn't told God, so it's all about you today. That's true worship. Huh? And it provokes him to say, listen, I got to give her what she need. Huh? I got to see what my son want. My God from Zion. That's true worship. Huh? 
going before God for no other reason but to please his heart. Huh? Did you hear me what I say? Going before God for no other reason but to please his heart. Today, God, it's all about you. That's when you know you're entering into true worship. Nothing from your mouth is about you. Nothing is uttered from your lips about you. That's when you know you are entering into true worship. Huh? Tug at his heartstrings huh? until it provokes him to respond to your heart. Tug at his heartstrings. Huh? You know how, you know, I don't know if anybody, some daddy's girls out there, but you know them, some of them men, they got that, they got that affinity to them girls, huh? Now, you know that the boy, that's my son, that's my boy, but them girls, they know how to tug at daddy's heart, huh? That's how the father is, huh? He, he we, once you know how to tug at them heartstrings just right, huh? It provokes him, huh, to respond to your heart to your desires, your needs, and your wants. Huh? That's true worship. My God from Zion. So listen, thank you so much for sitting here with me for part four of this series we're calling spiritual. Huh? Understanding everything we need to know about being spiritual and, and everything we need to do, uh, know about our God that is a spirit as well. So listen, I appreciate you for hanging out here with me until we meet again. Until our next episode in this series, episode five. I wish you more love. I wish you more light. I wish you more grace and more peace, honey. Listen, don't you let nobody take your peace here. Bye.